Welcome and good afternoon to our Memorial Day ceremony. I am honored standing here today with other veterans representing the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marine, Coast Guard, Merchant Marine, and Space Force. To our honored military dead who made the supreme sacrifice with their lives for our country, to our military veterans, and to our veteran military men and women who are now serving, to our municipal state officials, the Orient Veterans Memorial Board of Directors, and fellow American patriots. Post the colors. Would everyone please stand? <coughs> to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. Kathy McMinn. will lead us in the national anthem. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you for your service. Thank you. Good to see you. Good day on this blessed Memorial Day. If you can stand, if you are able, for our national anthem. Almighty, 
We thank you for the privilege of meeting on this hallowed day in this free nation to honor our noble dead and to rededicate our lives to you and our country. Remember those who lived and died fighting to protect the dignity and the freedom of mankind. Let our spirits be proud of them. Let our hearts be compassionate and our minds clear and determined in giving them honor and respect. As we remember the departed, let us be true soldiers in war and peace. Let us be courageous protectors and true guardians of freedom. Let this day be a day of commemoration and honor to those who sacrificed their lives in order to give us liberty and our nation security. Remember them, O Lord, in your mercy and have compassion on us. Heavenly Father, in your hands are the living and the dead. We give you thanks for those, our comrades and sisters, who have laid down their lives in the service of our country. May they rest in peace and may perpetual light shine upon them. May the good work of seeking justice, justice for the oppressed and peace for all mankind be rewarded with success and that their sacrifices shall not be in vain. And may we never fail to remember the awesome cause of freedom for that which we enjoy. On this day of sacred memory, we ask for grace and power to live truer lives, to be better servants of the living God, finer fathers and mothers, nobler sons and daughters, and more loyal citizens to this great country. Lord, grant that we may yet see the day when war shall no longer be, and peace shall be our common possession, the day when your will shall be done on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, hear our prayers for our sakes. Amen. Amen. Governor? Thank you. Thank you, Jim. We now have our, excuse me, our Memorial Day address. Our speaker today, this afternoon, is a Professor Emeritus John R. Todd, J.D. He is a member of the Federalist Society, the National Association of Scholars, the Distinguished Flying Cross Society, and VFW Post 334. John served in Vietnam as an Army officer and gunship pilot. He earned the Distinguished Flying Cross for Valor. That's the one they gave to Charles Lindbergh. And the Cross of Gallantry with Bronze Star. The only award for the date of his injury was the Purple Heart. Our speaker wrote and passed a bill through Congress providing benefits for widows and orphans of dis disabled veterans. John was the Outstanding Disabled Veteran of the Year in 2015 in the ceremony with President Obama. Let's give John our attention and a warm Lake Orion welcome. John. Good afternoon and thank you for that kind introduction. And I will be very sincere in expressing my thanks to be here among this great community that takes time to honor veterans and those who have died in combat. I appreciate all those runners who ran this morning. And no, I don't wish I could have been with them. Uh, we are here today on Memorial Day. And around the country, of course, there will be many speakers. And the president will lay wreaths on the tombs of the unknowns. But today I want to talk about the known. And I don't want to talk about, for example, in World War I, we lost 
117,000 killed in action. In World War II, we lost 292,000. In the Korean War, 50,000 Americans died or were brutally killed in concentration camps. In Vietnam, the war where I served, 58,000 men were killed in action and their names are on the wall. And in the war on terror, the last 20 or 30 years, with the volunteer military, we've lost over 7,000. Now, I'm sure you've been adding all those numbers up in your head, and they total to just over half a million. And so, those half a million, yes, they need to be, and it is just and fair, that we honor them. But in a sense, that high number, going back over a hundred years, is an abstraction for us. By an abstraction, I mean, we didn't know them. Many of us don't know all of the histories of World War I, World War II, Korea, Vietnam, and hardly any of us understand the histories and mysteries of the war on terror. So today, I would like to do a true memorial for those who gave their lives in combat. And now, if you are able, please stand. And if you are able, please raise your right hand. Repeat after me. I swear or affirm, I swear or affirm to defend the U.S. Constitution, to defend the US Constitution against all enemies against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Foreign and domestic. Thank you, you may be seated. Now those in, who served in the military know that usually at your induction or when you enlisted, you took that same oath. I remember I was 20 when I was drafted and took the first oath. After a little over a year in flight school, I took another road, but it was very similar. And although in college I had been a pre-law major and a political science major and an American history major, and for 42 years I taught law and constitutional issues as a professor, when I was 20 years old, I took the oath seriously, sincerely, but I'll be honest, probably like most young men and women, I didn't understand the full meaning of it. However, when I was in Vietnam as a combat pilot, I'll tell you what I was fighting. I was fighting for a day like today, maybe a few degrees cooler. That was a joke, kind of. And by the way, I appreciate class participation. We'll get some of that in a minute. And I love people who laugh at my jokes. I was living for a day like today in a community like this where I was secure, happy, healthy, maybe a bit wealthy, well-fed, and very happy and contented to be an American. Where in the afternoon, I participate in steak and hot dogs and hamburgers and maybe a pickup softball game. Yes, 
I, like most other men and women who've been in a combat theory, we were thinking about the American dream. We were thinking about the American life in a country of freedom and liberty and good moral people. So I suppose that the Constitution and the Bill of Rights were among those, perhaps at the very source. But I was probably thinking more about myself and about my loved ones at home. I was also thinking and fighting for my buddies, my comrades in arms. I was also fighting to accomplish my objectives and my mission whatever that be. And so now I think back to those buddies. I was in training in flight school for just over a year. And flight school is somewhat different than most military training. It's almost like college. We would have half a day academics in the classroom, half a day on the flight line. And, of course, we would be harassed by cadets, cad candidates all over the country. And in that period, that long period of somewhat stress, where over a third of the people were washed out, I developed deep friendships. And I'm thinking, of several of them today. Randy Pinnell, David Pop, Jerry Markland, Walter Stacy, Ted Toman, Jerry Pearlstein, and Eddie Stewart. Each of those men were my friends. They were my sincere, good friend. We had a year to develop that bond of friendship in our top academic and flight training. All of us went to Vietnam. I stopped counting the number of my classmates who died and killed in action. But those six stand out. I remember them today. I am mourning them today, even after 50 years. And so, today on Memorial Day, where we say that the purpose is to remember those who fell, I would like, if you please, if you wish to do that now, what I would like you to do, I want you to think of perhaps a grandfather or a great-grandfather who might have been killed in World War II. Think of a husband, a father, an uncle, a nephew, a son, and lately with women in the volunteer army, a young woman. <coughs> Think about that kid next door who never came home. Think about many children who grew up and the only memory of their father came from old photographs. And if you can't think of a particular name, I will give you one. Her name is Nicole G. And now what I would like you to do, obviously you decide if you wish. I would like you to bow your head and pronounce those names and Say them with memory. 
on the count of three. One, two, three. Thank you. So now we have participated, not in thinking about the half a million casualties, not a half a million of those who gave their life for their country. Yes, that is an expression that will be heard a lot today. They gave their life. And those English majors out there know that the word life is a singular noun. Yes, they gave one life. That's all they had. They gave their physical life. And now I would like to talk about the second life that they gave us. Each one of those people and statistically, most of the killed in action were young, single men. They would never see a beautiful bride coming down the aisle to join them in marriage. They would never see the children that they fathered. They would never go to dance recitals or football games to watch their sons and daughters perform. They would be absent when their older parents die. And obviously, they would not have been in the freest country in the world to develop their skills and support their family. No, they would be missed. They would not have those opportunities that we have had. And now I'll be slightly personal. When I was injured in Vietnam, I was flying a combat mission, and I was the recipient of several miracles from God, from army doctors, and from my co-pilot. The first miracle is that I survived from a bullet that ripped through my flight helmet. The second miracle is that I did not crash into the ground at the bottom of the power dive. I was back at my base in six minutes in the hands of my friend, the doc, the flight surgeon. Thus, I was alive. And also, my brain, such as it is, was spared. After a year at Walter Reed, I was able to go to law school. I was able to pass the bar on the first try. I was able to marry my beautiful wife, to sire two beautiful daughters, and become a grandfather. I was able to have a fulfilling career as a college professor for 42 years. My life did not end on the battlefield. I had those opportunities that Randy and David and Jerry and Walter and Ted and Jerry and Eddie Stewart didn't have. And I remember a smile, a twinkle in their eye when they succeeded in a certain flight operation. I remember long, sweaty uh, runs with Eddie. And I remember seeing a photograph of Walt's wife that he taped to the wall of our tent with army green duct tape. I remember 
philosophical conversations with Ted, who was a San Francisco flower child. And though he was a peacenik, he flew well. So those are the men that I remember. And again, I've intentionally not to find any more. But others have told me, and I've, I've stopped them in mid-sentence, when they were about to tell me of another classmate who was killed in Vietnam in another unit. I did not want to bear any more burden. <laughs> And now I would like to make a final point. And first of all, if you are a veteran of the modern wars on terror, I would like you to stand and I have something very personal to tell you. And by the way, as I said, as a college professor, I always love class participation. And don't worry we will not have a final exam. And, you know, some churches have a practice where when the minister makes a point, he will say, Amen, and then the congregation repeats back, Amen. This is not a church service, so we won't do that. But what we'll do is, how about, when I make a point, I might say at the end of it, agree, and then I would like everyone in the audience, I hope you'll agree with the point that I made, I'd like you to shout that out. That way, as a blind person, I'll know that you're out there. Is anyone out there agree? agree. agree. All right, thank you. Now, remember, and more on terror vets, please sit down. Remember last August, in Kabul, Afghanistan, thousands of people, Afghans, Americans, surrounded that airfield in a desire to be flown out of the country that our military and political leaders decided to abandon. Most of them were denied. Some of them have even been killed in the past eight months. You will recall that several Afghan mothers threw little babies over the wall in the hopes that those infants would escape. And I don't know if you saw it, but there were photographs of two American Marines, two women. By the way, my daughter was a Marine. I'm very proud of her. And those two American women, with tenderness, were holding those infants their own. And the next day, following orders, following orders to fulfill their oath to defend the Constitution, they were blown to bits by an insane suicide bomber who also killed almost 200 other people. One of them was named Nicole G. Possibly, she was, could be the last American killed in action in the line of duty. And now, I will recall my life right after Vietnam. It did not happen often because most Americans were good and graceful and polite people. However, there were times 
when people would say to me, how does it feel that you lost your war? And I'll tell you something. It didn't feel good to hear someone say that. Because the truth of the matter is this. Over two million Americans served in the Vietnam War. 58,000 were killed in action. We successfully beat off every battle. And Vietnam did not fall until Congress cut off the money for it. Our political leaders lost that war. Just as what happened in Korea. The Korean War lasted two years. North Korean communist and Chinese communist legions, millions, invaded the free South Korea. We beat them back to the midpoint. And the United Nations, our President and Congress, said, the war's over. Korean War veterans did not lose your war. And the same is true with the war on terror. Our soldiers, Marines, airmen, sailors, and the Coast Guard got over there too. They did their duty. They accomplished their missions in terrible, hot, mountainous, horrible climates against desperate, evil enemies and against horrible weapons, the IEDs. Yes, over 7,000 American servicemen died in combat, but almost 800,000 served many times they served three or four deployments. War on terror vets, you did not lose your war. Our political and military leaders surrendered it. So that is my message. My message of remembering real persons who died in action. And giving my sincere thanks to all veterans, and especially those of Korea, Vietnam, the War on Terror, who, like their fathers, grandfathers, great-grandfathers, did win World War II. And now, if again, at your consent, <clears throat> let us end, on the count of three, by saying out loud, and I mean out loud, I don't, I'm, I go to church, I'm not a theologian, I don't know. I don't know what the afterlife is like. But let's, the people here today, let's shout so that, if possible, they can hear that we remember them. One, two, three. Randy, Walter. Yell their names out loud. Randy, Carson, Edward Van Tassel. Excellent. So now, I thank you very much, and I thank the groups and the men who have done, men and women, yes who have done such a good job in arranging this and inviting me to speak. Dr. Joe called me up and he said, John, well, you know, you're a lawyer and a law professor, so you know all about the Constitution and the First Amendment. And of course, I modestly said, yeah, it's a little bit of a joke. And then he said, that's good because you're going to give a free speech. <laughs> and now, I have a personal favor to ask. And there'll be a, a joke coming. 
I, as you know, I am blind. And for your benefit and your safety, I do not drive. <laughs> and I've just moved and I've lost a lot of friends uh, from my old communities. I wonder if any of you uh, guys, if you have time on a particular day, I'll give you plenty of notice. If I could call you up, you could give me a ride to an appointment or an errand. By the way, I always take that driver to a free lunch. So if you could do that, I'd like to meet you. Take down your name and number. And again, I thank you. Thank you very much, John. You were outstanding, and I'm sure your message will be taken home by many people. Next on our agenda is Veteran of the Year. Harold Rossman, Lake Orion Police Chief, will present Todd DeKindren. Harold Rossman. Thank you, Dr. Joe Maspatel and the Orion War Memorial here in Orion. I would like to introduce, sorry about that, sir. I would like to introduce Gunnery Sergeant Todd D. Kindred. He was born in Pontiac, Michigan in January of 1985. He graduated from Lake Orion High School in 2003. He then enlisted in the Marine Corps and shipped to a recruit training in February 2004. Upon completion of his MOS school, he served with the Delta Company 3rd Assault Amphibian Battalion out of the 29 Palms, California, as an amphibious assault vehicle rear crewman. He deployed on the 31st Marine Expeditionary Unit to Okawana, Japan, and the Philippines from April 2005 to December to April 2005 to December 2005. During this time, he was promoted to Lance Corporal. After returning from deployment, he made the All Marine Boxing Team in January of 2006. He he went on to win the 2006 Armed Forces National Boxing Championship in the, light, uh, in the lightweight division, defeating the Army, by the way, of TKO in round two of four. He later took the 2006 North Carolina State Golden Glove Championships and the Southern Regional Golden Glove Championships, advancing to the 2006 National Golden Globes held in Omaha, Nebraska. During this period, he was promoted to corporal and went on to win numerous championships and awards and took bronze at the 2007 Eastern Olympic Trials held in Coca or Coca Beach, Florida. In November 2007, Corporal B. Kindred executed a permanent change of station to 2nd Assault Amphibious Battalion out of Camp Lejeune, North Carolina. During this period, he was promoted to Sergeant in February 2008. Sergeant De Kindred deployed to Ramadi, Iraq from October 2008 to March 2009 as an assistant to section leader in support of the Operation Iraqi Freedom. Task Force 29, during this time, he played a key role in governing the security of the people of Ramadi at an entry control point, operating millions of dollars in high-speed equipment while overseeing four security towers manned by two Marines at all times. Once he returned from deployment, Sergeant DeKindred went back to the All-Marine Boxing. 
team in March of 2009. With only a few weeks of training, he went to, on to win the 2009 VA in Virginia and North Carolina State Golden Glove Championship. 2009 Washington, D.C., the Regional Golden Glove Championships and advanced to the 2009 National Golden Glove Championships held in Salt Lake City, Utah. Sergeant D. Kindred was hand-selected to participate in two Olympic training camps at the U.S. Olympic Training Center in Colorado Springs, Colorado. He was also selected to participate in Marine Week 2009 working side by side with Marine Corps recruiters in Chicago, Illinois. There he, visited, he, there he visited local boxing gyms and high schools promoting not just boxing, but all Marine Corps sports. Sergeant 2nd Assault Amphibian Battalion in October 2009. There, Sergeant De Kindred volunteered for recruiting duty in January of 2010 and reported to basic recruiters school marine corps recruit depot at san diego california in august of 2010. upon graduating from basic recruiters course sergeant de kindred checked into recruiting station new york recruiting station brooklyn where he went on to do great things for his station sergeant de kindred soon became the leading recruiter at recruiting substation brooklyn Sergeant DeKindred would eventually become the aid gunner at recruiting substation Brooklyn for fiscal year 2012 and 2013. Because of Sergeant DeKindred's knowledge, wisdom, leadership, and motivation, recruiting substation Brooklyn is now one of the flagship stations in recruiting station New York. Sergeant DeKindred has trained and mon or mentored three canvassing recruiters at Recruiter Substations Brooklyn, all of which held APRs well above standard. Sergeant D. Kindred earned the Navy and Marine Corps Achievement Medal and was more as promoted to Staff Sergeant before completing his tour on recruiting day. Following a successful tour on recruiting day, Staff Sergeant D. Kindred reported to the 3rd Assault Amphibian Battalion, Bravo Company. Shortly after he transitioned to the Marine Corps, Individual Ready Reserve, IRR, while in the IRR he completed his bachelor's degree and then attended Barber College. After Barber College, he was activated to the Future Operations Chief on Camp Pendleton with deployment processing Command Reserve Support, Unit West. There, Staff Sergeant DeKindred played a key role in standing up to the mobilization cell. His hard work and dedication to the unit's success earned him his second Navy and Marine Corps Achievement Medal. While at DPR and RSU West, Staff Sergeant DeKindred was selected to the rank of Gunnery Sergeant and received orders to recruiting substation Orange. As the, as the station commander of the recruiting substation, Culver City. After six months as the station commander of RSS Culver City Gunnery Sergeant DeKendrick received orders to one Marine Expeditionary Force as the 1MEF G3 Administration Staff Non-Commissioned Officer. Gunnery Sergeant D. Kindred completed his master's degree in honorable discharge from the United States Marine Corps in May of 2019. He has, been, he has been serving in the Michigan Army National Guard as a sergeant first class since his honorable discharge from the Marine Corps. Gunnery Sergeant D. Kindred earned the following awards. Navy and Marine Corps Achievement Medal times two. Navy unit, Navy unit commendation, Navy Matoria commendation, Marine Corps Good Conduct Medal three times, National Defense Service Medal, Iraq Campaign, Iraq Campaign Medal with two stars. 
Global War on Terrorism Service Medal. The Sea Service Deployment Ribbon, two times. Marine Corps Recruiting Ribbon, Certificate of Com Commendation Individual Re Award, Notorious Mast times two, Expert Rifle Qualification times three, and the Expert Pistol Badge times two. So I present to Orion, Sergeant Todd DeKendrick. Hi, good afternoon everyone. Definitely an honor to be recognized as Lake Orion's 2022 Veteran of the Year, but I just wanna take this time to uh, not make it about myself. This is not about us today. This is about those who gave the ultimate sacrifice so that we could be here today. So if we can just take 10 minutes, or 10 seconds, I apologize. Borrow hoods in a moment of silence for those who gave the ultimate sacrifice. Thank you. Congratulations. How about another hoorah? hoorah. Another one. Hoorah. And one last one. Hoorah. Very good, very good. Chris Barnett will now Chris Barnett, Orion Township Supervisor. Where are you, Chris? Speak of Chris, here he is right now. Chris is going to tell us what makes America great. Chris? Thank you, Doc. And while the good professor made this participatory, I'm going to give you homework. So, we live in the greatest country on our planet, and I was thinking about it this weekend. Two nights ago, I was in Chattanooga watching the Lookouts play the the Birmingham Barons in a shootout double-A baseball game. And I was actually struck during the national anthem as we were looking at the flag to realize that we live in 50 completely distinct and unique, unique states, and we all pledge allegiance to the same flag and the same principles that make our country the greatest country on planet Earth. So my three reasons why America is great, and your homework is you need to figure out at least one reason, I'm making it easy on you, why you love America, and tell someone today, could be your spouse, could be your neighbor, and ask them why they love America. So my three, are that was number one. Number two is, remember, uh, our, our trials make us stronger. And, and if you remember September 12th, 2001, obviously September 11th was a horrible day. But every, I, I, I remember just driving down the road and being awestruck because every business, every vehicle had an American flag. People went the extra mile for each other. And that continued for a while, and then we got back into our day-to-day -day life. But this country is so unique and differ different than any other country on this planet. And the third reason is what we're celebrating today, why I love America. That people would literally travel across the planet into a different country to help others that they've never met, and they may be politically completely opposites. They might serve a different God, yet Americans roll up their sleeves, scramble across this planet to help others. And that's why I love America. Those are my three reasons. And your homework is to tell one person one reason why you love America today. Thank you very much, and thanks for being here, everyone. I'm gonna turn it back to Doc. Thank you, Supervisor Barnett. We will now have a ceremony called Placing the Wreath. Tony Watrous and Cynthia Wright, United States Air Force, will place the wreath. In honor of all of our military branches of service, the Honor, Navy, Coast Guard, Merchant Marines, and 
Air Force. Thank you. We will now honor the veterans who made the supreme sacrifice in our community. If you notice, our main monument is the the mother being hugged, hugging her son and son hugging mother and father standing in back, and the daughter putting her hand around the waist. The name of our monument is the uh, monument of joy and sorrow. Joy in that the soldier returned. Sorrow is that he never returned. Our main monument. We will next honor the veterans who made the supreme sacrifice in the Civil War. Brian Pence will now read the names. Thomas M. Bowers. Daniel Burton. Roswell Campbell. Henry C. Fairchild. Hiram Hemingway. Webster Adolphus Marsh. William A. Churchill. Eugene L. Rose. Charles Soper. And Frank Thornley. World War One and World War Two, read by Lee Smith. Chandler, got it. Yep. Mm -hmm. Otis C. Brewster. Newell Thomas Charlton. Vern E. Poland. Laverne H. Becker. J. V. Burns. Chester C. Campbell. Lee F. Carpenter. Clayton Albert Decker. Robert Leland Decker. Edwin R. Dewey. Roger H. Bevelcorn. Bernard A. Kowalk. Irwin A. Cruz. Martin F. Lamphere. Julian E. Moore. Charles J. Petit. Everett Pickerington. Anthony F. Summer. Allen. Allen B. Sperm. Donald R. Sova. Walter F. Walter. Randy Stetson. Barwick, 
Gary Bookner, Thomas Sealar, Albert Casson, James Kelly, Ronald Mazur, Robert Schmokel, and Michael Shagney. And some American Legion, Post 108 in Oxford, Thomas Anderson, Gerald Bambusek, Bad Bertram, Robert Guzdella, Kurt Graham, Blaine Eichel, Carl Holcomb, Vernon Holbeck, Michael Tyrell, Wilton Morris, Robert Schuler. Thank you, Steve. Let us bow our heads in a moment of silence and remember all those names that were just read. Kathy McMinn and all of us sing God Bless America. Kathy? When the storm clouds gather across the stormy sea, let us pledge allegiance to a land that's free. May we all be grateful for this land of snow fair as we raise our voices in this solemn prayer. God bless America, land that I love. Stand beside and guide her through the night with the light from above from the mountains to the prairies to the ocean white with foam God bless America my home sweet home from the mountains to the prairies to the oceans white with foam god bless america my home sweet home Please be seated. Chris Barnett. Chris is going to tell us about Operation Preservation for our memorial. And I will be brief. Um, stay hydrated. We have water over here for you. It's warm today. And I want to give a special thanks to all of our first responders that are here that raised this beautiful flag for us. Let's give them a round of applause. Thank you, gentlemen. They are staying extremely busy, but they carved out time for us today, and it means a lot. Listen, we have, as mentioned earlier, one of the most prestigious and renowned memorials in the state of Michigan, and you're here today. Yes. And we are so grateful. We would never be here without the support of many, many people, many of you that are here in the audience, and many of the people that are on this wall behind me. Um, but we want to keep this place pristine and grow it into something that will be here forever. 
And so we are launching officially today Operation Preservation. And on the back of your programs, you've probably already seen it, uh, you can see it here. Uh, it de details what we're doing, but basically we are raising money between now and, it's okay, Doc. It's between now and Independence Day, July 4th, uh, is our drive. And the good news, the exciting news is, if you want to join us and be a general donor of $250 or more, we have the, one of these very special challenge coins that was made just for this campaign. And on the front it says, Orion Veterans Memorial service peace and sacrifice our logo and on the back it has the logos of all the branches of service so we can do uh there's a there's a qr code with paypal link uh we we can accept venmo um we want to give a special thanks because between now and the fourth of july your donation will be doubled thanks in part to some private donors the most sherry family and the veterans of foreign wars so your your impact will be doubled it will continue to make this place the best memorial in the state of Michigan. So if you're interested in joining us or you know a business or a friend that might be, please uh, click on the link, check out our website or check in with uh, one of our Orion uh, board members that will be over here after the ceremony. And I'd like to give the very first two of these coins to Professor Todd and Mr. DeKinzer. DeKindred, thank you. Thank you for your service. We'll now we'll now have benediction by Chaplain Mouse. Thank you, Joe. I just like to uh, give Gunny congratulations from a Navy veteran. Sounds like you've been around quite a bit. Yes, sir. Also sounds like a man that can't hold a job. <laughs> so congratulations. We'll rock. <laughs> okay, you can remain seated and remain covered. Almighty Father, help us to remember that freedom is not free, that we have to work at it, nurture it, protect it, and pray for it. Freedom, like faith, needs our attention and our cooperation. As we leave this memorial to honor our noble dead, we ask that you would be with us, strengthen us, protect us, and keep us from strain. We, re we remember before you this day our comrades who have departed this life for their loyalty to God and country. May they rest in peace, we have honored those who now enjoy your eternal embrace. May your grace be with them and with us now and forever. We ask for your blessings for all those who are here today. Watch over us as we leave this place. May we all have a safe journey home so we may go forth into the world in peace and dedicated to your service. For this we pray. Amen. Thank you, Jim. PFW Bose 334, Honor Guard, give us a gun salute and taps.
two. This concludes our ceremony. Thank you for coming. And here's wishing all of us a wonderful, wonderful, glorious Monday. And be thankful for our sacrifices of the many who allowed this.